All right, and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bocor, your host, as you probably already know if you're following me. Appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to watch this episode, where yet I have another car review of this time a lovely, lovely blue color, 2023 Ford Mustang Mach-E GT Performance. Okay, a lot of stuff to say there. First of all, I always want to thank, as you folks know, the uh, OEMs and the uh, automobile manufacturers for allowing me the use of the press vehicles. And I would be remiss if I didn't thank Ford Canada for this. Thank you very much. It's been an absolute joy to drive around on this vehicle for uh, several days here. Been really nice and I'm going to go through my thoughts and impressions and kind of overviews on this vehicle. I'm not going to go into too much detail because I've already reviewed this vehicle a couple of times. I did an initial uh, first drive review which you can check out on this video here that's showing and then I followed up several months later with a full much fuller review where, where I was able to get a lower spec Ford Mustang Mach-E. I think uh, one of the, the mid-level uh, specs for about a week or so to spend more time with. So I've got a more detailed review at this video that you should check out if you want to kind of encapsulate everything. So what I'm going to do is focus on kind of just the highlights of the GT performance uh, because there's a lot of highs in those highlights that I want to talk about. Uh, they've done a great job with this vehicle. So sit back, relax, and let me get right to it. Now the Mustang Mach-E has been around since 2021, I believe I have my numbers right. So there are uh, several tens of thousands on the road today. And everybody that I talk to who is a Mach-E owner is extremely happy with their product. You know, I know Ford had some initial software issues like any newer company getting into the EV game. Again, this was their first fully electric uh, uh, vehicle since uh, for quite a while. Um, that was, you know, built on a bespoke platform and, you know, using the Mustang Heritage name. And I think it's, it's done quite well. As I said in my other reviews, uh, you know, a lot of people were kind of ticked off with the use of the Mustang, but I think Ford's done a fantastic job in encapsulating what that means from a heritage and from an overall audience and, and what owners think into this vehicle. And they've amped it up even more, and pun intended on that, folks. The, the GT performance is an absolute blast to drive, and I will talk, share quite a long piece in the driving summary coming up later on. It's longer than my usual folks because I kind of get into some, some deeper feelings about this vehicle and how good it really is and I think things that you need to know. But from an overall design standpoint, they haven't changed anything, you know, model year to model year. There might be some small changes, but I like the design. It sits higher. It's that SUV, compact SUV space, so you do get a commanding view of the, of the road when you're in it. It's solid. I love that they have the Ford uh, emblems everywhere, the pony lights up at night in the front grille. A lot of little things to kind of enhance this. And yes, it, it maybe screams electric. I don't know. I mean, some people have come up and going, what is that? It's a Mustang. Um, I haven't, what, what's engine is in that? So it's, it's a, some people don't automatically guess that this is an electric. And I think that's a good thing. They wanted to continue with that design heritage, incorporate things like the, uh, the turn signals in the back and the lighting scheme and things like that. It's a very familiar car for Mustang owners to get into. And you know what they've done with the GT Performance is just kind of crank it up notches, you know, giving specs like zero to 100 kilometers an hour or zero to 62 miles per hour in 3.7 seconds. So let's see, 3.5 seconds for zero to 60. That's an incredibly fast time for a street legal family hauler, you know, take camping, whatever you want to do with this thing. That's incredibly, incredibly amazing. And it's faster than my Model 3 long range. Um, and I don't, I try to drive, not to drive that too fast, to drive it in a slower driving mode. So um, they've done a really good job on this. I love the design of it. I love all the little elements to give it that spirited look. You know, it looks like it just wants to take off from just standing still. Really enjoy that. Um, so again, big, big thumbs up for Ford on the design. And you know, the, this, uh, Blue metallic paint is just absolutely incredible. The GT performance has come in a few uh, really nice colors that are different, not your standard color trims. And this blue pops a lot with the two-tone elements to it, the black uh, roofs and the black bottom skirts and stuff and, and the spoilers. So all these little nuances add to a very fine looking machine. You know, when you look at the, the, the this vehicle, even the three-quarter rear, it's just a really nice looking vehicle, uh, practical with the hatch. 
Uh, what again is added different to the GTs is the Brembo brake package, uh, really nice sticky Pirelli tires um, and uh, a pretty stiffened suspension. And I talk about the suspension in the driving, so I won't go a lot into it. I do want to say it's not bone jarring suspension and maybe I'll leave you with the thought in my driving that this thing is rattling around. It's not. It's just stiffer than I personally would like it from a suspension. I'm getting to the age where I want a little bit more soft and comfort. I don't want to be tracking vehicles. This thing is built for the track. It's ready for the track. So it's tuned for that with a little bit of city and highway finesse to give a little bit of comfort to people in the cabin. Again, it's not bone jarring, but you're going to notice a little bit stiffer suspension in this than some of the lower trims, which are geared more towards comfort. We talk and get into some of the specs here. Now from a battery perspective, uh, Ford does offer the Mach-E in both a standard range and an extended range, just like they do in the F-150. So instead of the 75-ish uh, uh, kilowatt hour standard range pack, you get um, 98 or 99 uh, kilowatt hour extended battery pack with whatever usable, those numbers change. So that's enough to give you an EPA rated range of 378 kilometers. Now you'll see in my range summary when I talk about it at the end of the show, I've been consistently getting more than that in just everyday driving with some highway and some city good mix. So if you can learn to control yourself in driving this and not have to jackrabbit starts all the time and floor it, um, you can get pretty good range on this, especially in idea conditions, which it is now. It's been a really hot summer, so it's pretty capable for just doing the everyday stuff. Now for charging, it does support DC, you know, AC fast charging and DC fast charging. I'll show you a close up of this. It's your standard CCS combo port. Um, which does support up to 150 kilowatts of DC fast charging peak. Looking at some of the tests, I haven't had an opportunity to DC fast charge this because I really haven't been burning off the range that much, to be honest with you folks. But by what I've seen others post, um, it's realistic to see a 10 to 80 uh, percent charge in about 45 minutes. 10 to 80, what kind of range you're going to get on that and plan your trips accordingly. To me, that's about probably two and a half to three hours of driving before you would need to stop again for 45 minutes. You know, maybe squeeze a little bit more if it's uh, not, you know, if you're not doing a 75 or 80 on the freeway, uh, 120 or 130 on the uh, Canadian highways consistently, you should be able to get that kind of driving experience and charging experience. Now the engine energy that's in that battery pack giving you all that range and being able to charge it also provides some enormous amounts of power and that's really I think the key underlining, one of the key underlining factors to this vehicle is the power. This is an all-wheel drive unit. It's called e-all-wheel drive, so it's electronically controlled and torque vector, you know, instantaneous and all that stuff. But what this can do is pump out 480 horsepower and even better, 634 pound-feet of torque. That's amazing for the car of this size and class. And it's not that big of a vehicle. You know, it's big enough and it is quite roomy as you'll see in some of the interior stuff, but it, what that means, folks, is that it just goes. I'll talk about that in my driving as well, but I've, I've really had a, a fun time with this, but I've had to be, do it in a civilized manner because we are driving around urban streets and stuff, stuff like that. So, and there are some driving modes as well, which I'll talk about in the driving summary to, to amp that up if you want and to give you better performance in that. But all in all from the power, it's just absolutely phenomenal. They've done an increase, uh, you know, a great job in increasing that power output. I mentioned the suspension with that Magna Ride damping system, again, uh, to improve the handling performance and uh, take, keep the car uh, on the road, basically. All right, so I'm going to talk about cargo space in this. Let's talk. Let's first let's look at the front because this does have a frunk, and in fact, quite a large one. I'll show you some shots here in the B-roll and I'll put some numbers up on the screen on what that is because I just don't remember folks what it is at the top of my head here. But it's a good size frunk. It's uh, you know pretty comparable to the Model 3 and the Model Y and they have pretty significant frunks. So Ford's done a good job at utilizing that space as well. Uh, I've had a few people come up to me and pop the hood and were quite surprised not to see an engine in there. They go, what? It's a Mustang. What happened to the engine? And have to explain all that. So it's a lot of fun. It makes a great conversation starter for people that don't know EVs. But practical. They've been able to package, again, the front wheel uh, motor, the, the drive motor element into a spot. A little, probably a little more forward, a little more down, but not enough that they could still keep uh, a fairly sizable crumple zone and integrate a front trunk. Let's go look at the back. So this is the hatchback, which I like, and the trunk, uh, trunk release is down here. Push the button and off it goes. You could do that uh, with the key fob. I couldn't find a button inside or anything on the screen to pop the 
the hatch, I mean. That's the word I'm trying to find, folks. It's early in the morning and I haven't had my coffee yet. So please be, be nice to me. Uh, so it's a good size boot, as you can see. Um, nice flat floor. Again, decent left uh, liftovers here. I like that. Um, I'll put up the, the numbers here of what the cargo space is with the seats, uh, second row fold uh, up as they are. Or if you fold them down, you get a lot more room. So I'll show you what that looks like, but it's a good amount of space. I don't think it's class leading, of course. I don't think so. Um, they have a nice winter mat here and then underneath in here, there is a, uh, a secondary element here that you can keep your charging case and some uh, they have a some other mats uh, the cloth mats and stuff so I'll, I'll show you what that looks like here in the b-roll but it's a pretty good amount of space to keep some odds and ends uh, more than you'd probably think so that's pretty good with some other little cubbies so you know there is some space here that you can make practical use of i gotta put my sun spe specs down because it's pretty hot and bright uh, here which i like uh, you can take this uh, tonneau cover off as well it's very easy just to take off I actually had this loaded yesterday with a whole bunch of stuff that we were taking to family and it was this thing was just pushing up so even with that on you could still kind of do your costco runs and load it up but it is something you can take off if you want to and i like that it has a, ni a nice high opening you can program of course the height like always and then when you're ready to go uh, close it down and it's nice smooth power so they've done a good job on this all right entry uh, exit ingress egress is pretty good in this again if you're not used to the mustang you got to push these buttons it pops the door, there's an actuator, and in the front you push the button and then there's a handle to reach out. This one, there's no handle, it just pops the button out enough, pops the door out enough so that you can grab it and take it. Pretty good stuff. I've heard some people talk about winter, that sometimes there might be problems. I don't know how true that is. Um, I, I know some guys who have it and I haven't heard anything from them, but anyway, uh, that's something you need to think about. So you can see a pretty good opening. Yeah, it's not huge because it's got that low sloping, sloping. I like to say sloping all the time, don't I? sloping roof line with an early cut here uh, if it was out a little bit more then you could have a little bit more room to get into but let's see here it is a it does sit higher so that's nice you do have to duck down but once you're in it's nice and comfortable i've got more than a fist fist and a half of leg room and uh, a little bit more than a fist of headroom even with this uh, all glass roof lots of room here again four comfortable five in a pinch uh, the interior is very nicely appointed uh, really, really, they've done a great job here, so uh, nothing bad to say here. Just quickly show you the interior, because I don't want to spend a ton of time. You've seen interiors before, but it's a really nicely laid out interior, a nice use of materials. The performance gives you that, you know, uh, nicer look, two tones here. You've got a mix of leather and materials. You've got nice enhanced switch uh, stitching. You've got some additional... Um, support mechanisms here on the upper back, a lower neck. Um, I can tell you that the seats are extremely comfortable. Boy, I found a position and this has just been really, uh, really nice to drive. A nice grippy steering wheel, a uh, good size binnacle giving you all the pertinent information. And of course, that big portrait display that I loved on the F-150 and that I love on these things. Actually, Ford's gone, they've done really well on the infotainment on these. I think that they've done some software updates to really make them stable and very useful. So it's a, it's a really clean interior, if you want to call that. Not a lot of clutter. There's a good size storage uh, under here that rolls away. That gives you uh, outlets and that kind of stuff here. Shift knobber, nice uh, knob, nice cup holders, a storage, a, a charging mat. So you can put two phones on there. Glove boxes over there, manual. Decent sized door pockets. You can't put huge water bottles, but you can certainly fit some. Um, and then there is no power uh, roof. It's just a fixed glass roof. But I did find in the heat that we've had that the cabin heats up, but not as much as my Model 3. So I don't know if they've got additional reflective coatings on here because Tesla claims a 99.9% .9 UV blockage, but man, it gets hot in my Model 3. This one doesn't get as hot. Uh, and we've had these days, home link buttons on the, the stuff like that. So if I quickly jump in here and just show you the displays, without taking too much time. So again, you've got your driver binnacle. Um, I'm gonna put this on. And so hopefully it stops bonking at me. I guess I'm gonna have to close the door because that's just the way it is with these things. But you've got your uh, uh, ready to go range. This is basically a simple display and I like that. Can't really change things. It does show you a blue cruise when it's activated and I've got a video showing that. Stock for the wipers, turn signals, lights, things like that. Your ADAS systems and cruise and stuff are here. Your music and telephony uh, uh, controls are here, which work really well, integrate quite nicely to the screen. I really like the entertainment side of the screen. It's probably one of the best ones 
that I've seen this and in the 150 because I, I like to listen to XM as an example and, and order stations in in a, rel, in a favorite type of way that I like to have them. And this, even with this button that I can go back and forth on or just touch them, I could scroll to my favorite ones. Then they have these cards in the bottom, which are really nice, kind of tells you, um, you know, what's going on in your trips and, and what's the cause, what was the, the use for the trips as far as how to, where do my energy go? And I'm continuing to, to tally my trip so far. Um, so lots of nice uh, information there. Uh, charging, of course, if you want to uh, look at charging, it comes up with stuff there telling you where you are and uh, you can look at history and then departure and comfort settings and look for an edit charging location. So that's, that's pretty cool too. So really simple things here with these cards. I like them. I think you can uh, add more to this if you want. I haven't really gone in and fully customized it, but I really like this because when I get in and I'm at this screen here, so let me just go back to that screen. Not sure why it's not going back. There we go. I have did it. And I get out of the car and turn it on. It comes back to the screen exactly the way it was. And, you know, you've heard me on the last few reviews that that's a kind of a pet peeve of these manufacturers that, you know, reset the screens and take you to a welcome screen or, or um, something different. And I'd like to be exactly where I was when I got out of the car. And this does it. So the Ford system here has done extremely well in making it easy to navigate around. That's the first thing. And then all the controls and stuff are really simple to use and operate, right? Here's your engage your one pedal drive. It's either on or off. If you want a sound, here it is. Auto hold, if you don't have one pedal drive, you can engage that. Here's your three different uh, driving modes, right? And unbridled, and then you can get into unbridled extended if you want, right? And it says I pedal pause, brake pedal required to reduce speed. So when you're into the track mode, that kind of stuff, right? So it's pretty cool stuff that uh, they give it to you and they make it easy to, to navigate and get different sounds, uh, phones, all that kind of stuff. It's just a really easy menu system to navigate. And most of the settings are set and forget systems, right? So once you go through and set it, you're good to go. Also has some decent cameras. You have your backup cam, which is pretty good screen. You have a 360 view. If you want to just look at the uh, the front here, and then you want to look at just that front portion. Let's say you're about, you're going into a space. Uh, you want to get a little bit more of an angle on that. Then here's your 360, of course, uh, as well. So good stuff. Oh, here's where you can open the trunk. Is that going to do it? No, that's just telling me it's the trunk. Ah, I thought I found it. Oh, well, I'll keep looking. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, a, a really nice screen, a really nice interface. HVAC again is down here. Um, easy to interface if you need to do something with the HVAC. All the controls are here basically. Um, so uh, I just turn that on. Um, but you can, you know, of course, change where things blow, all that kind of stuff. Um, oh, I went on to auto, I guess. I don't want that. Let's do this. Here we go. So change uh, all that stuff, max. Pretty recirculate, pretty straightforward stuff. Does have heated seats. Um, believe, I believe front and rear does not have cooling seats that I could find. And then, of course, there's settings for your nav that you can um, look at different things or turn on some of the tools and settings. So you could dig a deep dive into this as much as you want if that's what you want to do. But I, I just I really am, am happy that they've been able to keep where you are in the screen element going. And uh, that's about it for the front. Let's check out the back quickly. There you are at the back again. You saw me get into it, but again, nice use of materials. Very pleasant, very supportive. Uh, I don't believe these things uh, lean down at all. Let me think. I think they just no, they just have one one setting. They fold down. So it looks like it's a 60, uh, 70, 30 split with an armrest that comes down. Pretty standard fare here, nothing out of the ordinary. You've got some vent controls and a USB-C uh, charger back here, but that's about it for the passengers. A couple LED lights up top. Not a whole lot going on, but it's uh, it's comfortable, it's clean, nice, supportive, and, and hopefully long-lasting and durable materials. They've done a good job with that flat floor. All right, now that we've explored the outside and inside of the vehicle, let's go for a drive. Now, this isn't as quick as my usual drives. Hopefully, you'll last the 10, 12 minutes, whatever it is. Um, I do provide some good thoughts to that, so hopefully you can watch through it, and then I'll catch you back here for the closing. But this this little part of the video is more about the driving and my, uh, and my just thoughts about driving this vehicle around for several days. Um, it is a, an extremely, of course, as an all-electric, it's already an extremely capable vehicle. Um, it's, you know, it's going to have already good torque and horsepower and performance numbers without even going down the GT route, without just keeping it as a base Mach-E. It's very, very good. Now, what they've done in this vehicle, though, however, is, of course, pun intended, amp up the, the power delivery. 
you know, to give you that whopping um, 650 pound-feet of torque and 450 or so horsepower in that range um, instantaneously. And that just sets another bar here in that it's been really hard for me to not drive fast in this vehicle, if that makes any sense. I've, it's been a conscious effort over the last few days to kind of maintain some sense of speed, civility in driving this vehicle around because it just wants to go. You've, it just, it, 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 it's that Mustang, you know, just wants to run and let loose. And, you know, in, in normal, everyday city, urban, driving to work, doing errands, traffic, you, you can't go zero to 60 in three and a half seconds, which this car does, or 3.6, 3.7 in that range, because you're getting speeding ticket awfully fast. And it'll be a dangerous situation on uh, roads that are 35 miles an hour or 50, 60 kilometer an hour spe uh, roads. Um, you just can't, you can't do it. It's not safe and it's not recommended. And it's a challenging to do. So it's been, it's been, it's been a struggle a little bit uh, and I mean that in a good way to <laughs> try to really drive this vehicle in a really normal way. And you can. It's very refined. It, it you know, the one pedal works excellently. Like, uh, you know, I really enjoy how Ford has put in the one pedal. It's the same implementation like an F-150 as well. They've done a great job with this. They make it seamless. It's either on or off and, and it's easy to stop in this vehicle, easy to go with one pedal. I hardly use the brakes. The accelerator is where I have a bit of a challenge in trying to regulate and modulate that so that I don't get all those ponies right away in this thing. So I can uh, keep this in some sense of civility. So I've been able to, to learn that relatively quickly and be able to manage that quite well. Uh, it just shows though the true capabilities of this GT performance vehicle where, where it's all amped up and ready to go. One main characteristic that I've noticed right off the bat is, is that the suspension is stiff. Not in a bad way, it's, it's planted, it really, really uh, feels planted. These Pirelli uh, tires are amazing, uh, these uh, old seasons that they have on them right now. Um, they just grip the road. But in fact, there's so much power that action, I can actually very quickly chirp the front axle because when I floor it, you get that, of course, you get all that weight. We have the battery. Yes, it's low in center, but you're still going to get a, a weight shift, right? As you propel off the line, you're going to get that weight shift back, and that's going to take a little bit of weight off the front axle, which means the wheels will come will become lighter uh, because the weight uh, is not on them so much, and with all the power that's being delivered, e all-wheel drive, that electronic all-wheel drive, instantaneous torque vectoring, I get a bit of a wheel chirp. And that's pretty fun, you know. I, I haven't had that since the uh, the Taycan, to be honest with you, that I was able to do that. Um, so, again, um, it's it's something that you have to get used to. So, um, the suspension for me on an everyday driving is a little stiff, right? It, it does have a, a, an electronic dampening uh, system, but I couldn't find in here any way to if they're variable controlled through the, through the software. I think they're just set like that, and they work really good. And I, it's probably load uh, censored dampening. So as you get more people, or as you get more load in here, it will vary that uh, the amount of stiffness in here to compensate for the load. Uh, because I couldn't find any settings like a comfort or a, a sport or anything like that from a suspension perspective. There's nothing to change here, but it is electronically uh, dampened. Uh, but it is stiff, so going over you know potholes and bumps, you'll feel them. The car will move will will move around a bit. You're not going to lose control, but you'll feel it. So it does it does pass uh, a good amount of that energy into the occupants. So trying to drive you know drink a full coffee in, on a bumpy road is going to be a challenge. Trust me, I know that firsthand, folks. So um, in saying all that, uh, this is a, has been an extremely fun car to drive. Other than the suspension, it's very comfortable. The seats are extremely supportive. I, I absolutely love the interior. It's well built, fit and finish. It's quiet for what it is. Um, very quiet. Needless to say, you know, it's a great driving experience. You just have to be prepared for the power. Now there are three driving modes plus an additional driving mode. I've maintained this in whisper mode, which is would most likely be the equivalent of eco mode, but really without sacrificing a lot of power and torque. You get a lot even in this mode. It's their quiet mode. It's their it's the one that uses the less amount of power mapping, so you can stretch your battery range. And I'll I'll talk about range numbers coming up. Um, but in that case, uh, it's just been it's just absolutely fantastic to drive around. Now I've tried the second mode, 
which I believe is the engage mode. Um, and it's, it's quick, but I didn't notice a big difference, to be honest with you. In fact, you know, I thought that they were very similar in, in the way that they drive, uh, maybe a little bit of extra push, and then you can get into unbridled, you know, and that's really where it, it, I just turned it on now and I could feel a little bit more power already as I'm just kind of keeping the pedal where it is, already being delivered to that without having to push more. So it does open up and, and provide more, even more power at mapping. And then of course you get um, a, another mode, which is your unbridled extended mode. And I'm not, I'm not using that because that's really designed for track mode. So if you're gonna go and track this car, it's a mode that will give you good power delivery and traction control also trying to conserve power uh, as you're driving it hard. So try to regulate the battery heat so that you can get longer durations on the track without really chewing up the battery um, power in there and draining it super fast. So I'm in unbridled mode and what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop here and I'm just going to, um, I've just been kind of driving back and forth on this fairly empty country road just to make sure that uh, there's nothing here that's going to put me into an unsafe situation and just give this just a quick a zero to 60 run which will only take a couple hundred feet at the power delivery that's here so let me slow this vehicle down here um, and just kind of give it a quick stomp make sure that nothing's going to slide around here because um, I have some loose stuff in the car so you may hear some noise so let me just give this a little I probably won't even get up to 60 but just that launch off there is no launch control or anything like that you just hammer this so ready to go on three three two one go And I'm at 60. And that's the slower mode. It, well, it's unbridled, but I think it's actually got less power delivery than probably engaged. That's just my opinion. You can hear a bit of a engine rumble, a lower rumble. Again, it's 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 the propulsion sound. It's turned on here on that. Um, it, it's it's exciting. It really is. You know, and, and I have a lot of good power in my Model Three. Don't get me wrong. In fact. You folks know that if you know me that I run it in chill mode because I don't want all that power delivered. So let me try one more here. I'm going to put it into engage mode and what on three, three, two, one. And there's hundred. There's your sixty. So again, um, very similar in the power mapping. It just goes, you know, without without going, I'm not on a track, uh, so I'm not going to do anything more fancy here. If I had the, the ability to go to a track and do some good zero to 60 quarter mile runs and some good slalom, you would really see this thing shine. But I hope you can kind of get some sort of sense through this longer driving portion that I usually do. This is extremely long, but I felt it very important just to kind of give you my thoughts on this vehicle because it is different. To wrap up this long driving segment, and I hope you've stuck with me through this part, um, it's an absolute joy to drive. It's been extremely fun, you know, just fantastic. Ford, you know, you've done an, a really fantastic job in in taking, again, that Mustang nameplate, which I know is, is heritage to Ford and is extremely important to them, and maintaining the sense of the history and the status that Mustang brings into the automotive environment. You've done a great job. A lot of people have criti criticized Ford for putting the Mustang nameplate on this vehicle, I would totally disagree with them. If you get out and drive one, even just the plain Jane uh, Mach-E, the base entry entry one, they are very fun and spirited vehicles to drive and they are well deserving of the Mustang nameplate. All right, so just here in the Mach-E GT and just uh, showing you again their uh, vehicle system here for the Ford Mustang. So one of the things you saw there was that alert. It actually uses um, uh, optical sensors to look at your eyes and uh, see that you're paying attention and looking in front of the road. So if I hold the phone up too high, it gets blocked by those sensors and it will register that I'm not looking and start bonging at me, which is what it did there. So I'm just going to try to hold it back a little bit so that you can see. So I've got I've got it engaged. I don't have my hands at the wheels. It's keeping the lane keeping. Again, it's telling me to watch the road, so I have to. Um, keep the phone a little bit lower. Maybe if I go off to the side here, it'll be a little better. Um, but yeah, it, it keeps the lane. It's pretty nice. It does ask you probably about every 15 seconds or so to grab your, your the wheel, give it a nudge. Um, the adaptive cruise uh, is nice. It's smooth. It does again doesn't use too much aggression, slowing or speeding up. 
uh, to maintain the adaptive spacing and, and the speed elements that you've set. So I like that. Uh, the lane keeping is really good. It's pretty solid. Um, so again, they've done a good system and with that. So this does have an auto lane change feature as well. So I'm not touching the wheel. I'm going to just activate this turn signal by uh, doing the stock. And uh, as you can see, the car indicated the lane change and has moved over, that it's clear and then stop the signal. So I have not had my hands on the steering wheel in any part of that execution of that uh, command. So let me do that again. I'm gonna go back to the right lane. I'm just gonna put the stock up to the turn signal and it checks and it does the turn. It indicates on the map there, as you can see, and it changed the lanes and maintained the speed on everything. So that's a pretty good system. That's one of the really smoothest lane change systems that I've seen in a lot of these uh, level two adaptive uh, you know, highway lane keeping and highway assist features. That's pretty smooth. That's pretty effortless too. So um, I have to admit they've done a really good job in that feature here as well. All right, so I just want to quickly highlight my driving summary for the week that I've had this vehicle. Um, as you can see, I put on uh, about 437 kilometers and it projected that I would do about 419. So it was a little under in its projection. I actually did more than what the vehicle thought I would do, probably because it was still recalibrating the BMS from the last driver. It takes a couple of cycles for the BMS to kind of learn your driving habits and start factoring in some some much more historical data to gauge uh, estimates on and of course as I mentioned on every show most uh, pretty all the other press drivers that get these vehicles hammer them and this one's easy to hammer because it's the GT performance so uh, you know I did a little spirited driving but was trying to maintain composure throughout the, the week that I had it so just normal driving so you can see I did pretty good give you the average there 20.5 kilowatt hours per 100 not the most efficient but again it's not claiming to be the most efficient so that's okay very hot temps we've had this week um, a lot of on and off AC use as well um, some highway driving I would say probably about 40% uh, highway 60% city uh, urban just moving around so a good mix of driving habits in optimum weather conditions as far as battery temperatures go so to get the best out of it and here's a quick screenshot just of the final trip total one thing I like about Ford is that they do kind of say hey this is kind of where your energy went it went towards these figures and as you can see the majority of my energy went to um, to driving the vehicle in a normal mode with some other accessories and stuff so uh, so pretty good I think I did quite well in this vehicle it again it handled very well and I think that that's a pretty good average again this is the top spec with the most power you go down to some of the lower power output uh, specs and you'll get much better uh, range and uh, efficiencies all right well I hope you enjoyed all that driving information it was a lot but certainly tried to just again encapsulate my thoughts you know, I don't get these vehicles too long, usually a week, sometimes less. So it's, it's, I'm trying to form a really educated opinion that I can pass on to you folks as quick as possible because obviously it, you're going to get so much more knowledge on a longer term drive with a vehicle over at least a couple of months and, and a couple of seasons, especially here in Canada, you know, uh, between summer and winter, it's a totally different uh, driving experience here. So that's where you can really get a, a good understanding of what a vehicle can do. But in saying that, as you've heard me say over and over, this has been a fantastic vehicle to have for, for these few days. They've done a great job in Ford. Now, of course, if we talk about pricing, it's not cheap. Uh, you know, the base models start a lot lower than this, but this being the GT Performance, MSRP is at 95,000 and change. Sorry, 95,290, including freight destination. Um, but you can get into it, the, G, the lower spec performance, uh, they tell me at 82,995, so just over 83,000. So from that 83,000 to 95,000 range, that's a pretty high price point, right folks? I get it, I've been, people have been looking at this and I tell them the price, they go, whoa, that's really expensive. And I say, yeah, it is, I totally agree with you. Um, is it worth the money? You know, that's for you to decide. Again, you know, is a, a million dollar Lamborghini worth the money? To me, absolutely not. But to a lot of people, absolutely yes. So it's all very subjective. And I would encourage you to think about, you know, what you want, your budgets and all that stuff. You get a very capable vehicle here in the GT Performance Edition. Um, the basic differences really between the GT Performance and the GT are, you know, uh, zero to 60 is a little quicker, three and a half obviously in the performance. Um, you get a little bit higher torque rate at 34 pounds more at 634 versus 600 um, in this um, in the performance. Um, again, everything else is pretty well standard. You get the Magna Ride suspension, which is an option on this one. Um, I'm just trying to think, uh, look at some of the differences here. I think the brakes and everything are, yeah, still Brem Brembo. 
Um, you get the body cladding and uh, performance seats, of course. Uh, these are more contour front seats in the, uh, in the, actually the performance in the performance edition. Illuminated pony badge is the same. I'm just looking at a bunch of stuff. Okay, so uh, again, slightly, slightly less range in this one because of all the juice that it wants. Now these do support over the air updates. So uh, in fact, it actually pushed one to me while I had it. The first night I had it, it was asking me, can I install this update when I was at home? Connected to Wi-Fi, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. And uh, off it went. So, uh, so it does support over their updates and I can attest that it did that. So, you know, again, from a price point, this is not an economy vehicle, right? And don't ever think it is, but for what you get for the solidness, the package and all the amenities that are in this and top of all, when it says GT performance, it really means performance. So that's what you're buying with this vehicle. Um, uh, as far as competitors go, check out, you know, maybe Model Y performance in this class. Um, uh, I'm just trying to think of some others, you know, you'll have to go look around um, in this class because it's getting very clouded, you know, could you say uh, the GT Kia uh, EV6 uh, GT? Possibly. Again, I think it's a little smaller car than this, um, but that is something that's possible. Any, anything that has the GT or any of those South Korean products that have the boost button uh, can certainly have that at least 10 seconds worth of power that can, that can come pretty close to something like this. So you'd have to check the specs out. Uh, but something that's that's continually this, you really had, need to move up into some of the, the BMWs and the Mercedes and some of the Germans, the Audis, um, that have a higher um, spec levels on some of the power to get into that. And then you're talking a lot more money though. You're talking, you know, Taycans, e-tron GTs. Um, these these are a lot more money and they're, they're smaller. They're different vehicles, right? Uh, handling quite well, probably even better than this. And this handles extremely well. So it, it's kind of, because it's performance, it's in a bit of a middle zone there where I think the value in that class of performance vehicles is really good, you know, um, and you definitely have to do some homework if something you like. But again, Ford, you know, you see these commercials about Ford build quality, job number one, all these taglines they've used. In this vehicle, it shows. And even in the F-150, they've put together phenomenal vehicles with great workmanship and great pride and quality. You know, going over some bumpy roads, launching this thing a little bit, there's no squeaks and rattles, nothing gives, everything is sturdy, and everybody who's had in this car has commented the same thing. How, how quiet it is, how pleasant, how well built, how sturdy it is, how comfortable it is just to drive around even with that a little bit stiffer than I like suspension. So they've done a great job, definitely worth consider. Would I recommend this vehicle? Absolutely, thumbs up again. Uh, I think that they've done an incredible job in this vehicle, and if the paint alone color doesn't get you, I'm not sure what else will. All right, and that's it for this edition of the EV Revolution Show. Hope you enjoyed my look at the 2023 Ford Mustang Mach-E GT Performance Edition. Fantastic, fantastic vehicle. I think I've used that word. I lost count how many times I said the word fantastic. There we go, I did it again. Mm, I gotta stop that. Anyway, appreciate you taking the time to watch this episode. As always, thank you uh, to Ford Canada for allowing me the use of this vehicle. Very, very good. All my contact information is coming up at the end of the show. Patreon supporters, you know who you are. I'm always, always very humbled and thankful for Patreon. It's a lot of effort to do what I do. So if you think about that you wanna support me on Patreon, uh, I could certainly use it. Check out the link uh, at the end of the show. See the website and something you feel you wanna do, it would be much appreciated. It's a lot of work to get these things out to you folks. A lot of running around in time, so appreciate it. Again, everybody stay safe, and I hope you do look at this vehicle in your EV choices. And if you have questions, send me an email, evrevolutionshow at gmail.com. It's that simple. I always respond and talk to everybody, so I encourage you to reach out if you have questions, comments, you need some help. So again, until the next show, everybody stay safe. I will see you when I see you, and take care. Bye-bye.